The attorney who defended the Boston Strangler, he defended Patty Hearst. Another famous case, India versus Union Carbide. F. Lee Bailey is talking to Peter. Now, rather than talking about all those old cases, we're going to talk about something that's a little new. Uh, Mr. Bailey, maybe you can explain to us about this master's program for lawyers that we were talking about. Yes, happily, for better than 20 years now. I have uh, been enthused about creating an institution where trial lawyers could be trained. People getting out of law school have almost no trial skills, and they tend to learn the skills they acquire when they acquire them at the expense of their clients. Mm. The school, finally, after three years of work, has been approved in California. It can grant the degree master's in litigation. It will admit, in 1989, 50 students who Only are, 50? 50 students who have two to five years minimum practice and have shown excellence along the way in law school and elsewhere. And I'm hopeful that in seven months of intensive training with the best faculty this country can furnish, we'll turn out some green berets of the courtroom. One of the things that I have to wonder, why has this not been done before? Or has it been done before and done successfully? No, it never really has. There's been a lot of agitation. Everybody's agreed for a long time that our trial lawyers are, are very uneven. You might get a good one, you might get a bad one. Uh, which tends to upset the system, and we have all also agreed that England has by far the best system where trial lawyers are a specialty. Only they are allowed in courtroom, and they have to have some additional training after law school to qualify. It's more difficult to do geographically in this country, but it can still be done, and we intend to show that. Might this program further separate those good lawyers from the bad ones? Because only the good ones, frankly, are going to be able to afford to go there and do this at the expense of their firms or the government or whoever. That, that really isn't true. Uh, I've talked with the Justice Department, the military, uh, some big firms, and small firms. Uh, indeed, I'm going to be involved in raising funds for some of those that don't have them. Most mm -hmm. places have said, if you'll sign a contract to work for me two, two, three years after you get out, whether it's the government or a private firm, I'll sponsor you through. I'll pay the tuition. I'll pay your salary. Mm -hmm. and I'll pay your expenses. Of course, you're not going to do that for, for a lawyer that you don't think has the potential anyway. No, I'm very hopeful we'll get the cream of the crop because that first 50 is going to be watched very carefully by every judge in the United States. And if they think we've done a good job, uh, the line will deepen. If they don't, the program might not succeed. I'm confident that it will. If they think you've done a good job, we're talking about expanding the program to include more lawyers per year or sticking with the 50. I think this particular institution will stick with 50 because I think that's the maximum you ought to work with. But I think other kinds of courses that are very similar in structure could spring up around the country, including right here in Florida. One of those things that you and a lot of other practicing attorneys now think has been a long time in coming. Yeah, I think we're going to have to pitch in and literally teach the faculties how to teach trial law. And then when we do that, we can pull back into practice again. Effley Bailey, thanks for talking to us. Thank you.